We're going to go back to the filmmaker of Crude, The Real Price of Oil, coming out in movie theaters, art houses across the country. Very important documentary. We'll give you that website as well before our guest leaves us. But we're going to go back to Joe in just a moment. I want to tell you about one of the sponsors who made this hour possible. That's a colablue.com, atmospheric water generator. Well, this would really help the folks down there. They're in the middle of the Amazon that can't use their own water. It grabs the water out of the air and then puts it through a seven-stage filter, including reverse osmosis and carbon, carbon and UV. Did you know you could be drinking fresh, clean water made right from the air you breathe? This isn't something out of a science fiction book. Our sponsor, Cola Blue, with the Cola Blue 28 machine, will allow you to do just that. Seven and a half gallons a day. They have bigger units if you want them. And it holds the water inside of the system in a stainless steel tank. It looks like a water cooler without the water bottle on type. Uh, it's a colablue.com, E-C-O-L-O blue dot com or 1-800-691-6043, 800-691-6043, at com. And uh, then also, don't forget that I'm also a documentary filmmaker and have authored a book and published another book and a lot of other great books and videos and materials that I think is the most important uh, work out there that I've seen or read is all available at our online bookstore and video store at InfoWars.com. And your purchase of books and videos also makes what we do here possible because we are self-financed in all the material and information we bring you on this radio show and with the news sites and the films. And I want to thank everybody for their continual support. My film, The Obama Deception, films like Endgame, Terror Storm. We've got Camp FEMA coming out uh, in two weeks. You can pre-order that to be the first to get it at InfoWars.com. And we have the books and, of course, the T-shirts and ball caps and other materials, the gear, uh, there at InfoWars.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. That's 888-253-3139. You can also write to me at P.O. Box 19549, Austin, Texas, 78760. You can also call and ask the operators questions about combos, discounts, different films. Some of my documentaries are as inexpensive as five ninety five dollars per DVD. So, again, check that out. P.O. Box 19549, Austin, Texas, 78760. Okay, going back uh, to Joe Berlinger uh, and the film Crude, The Real Price of Oil. Uh, we're, again, I want to get off the oil system. It's been great for us, but it has all this toxic waste associated with it. The greenhouse gas carbon tax thing is a red herring in my researched opinion, to put a tax on carbon dioxide instead of going after. That's why oil companies are now behind the greenhouse gas. It, it, it gets them off the hook for the cracking of the oil, the refining of the oil, the extracting it. Joe, you, you went down to Ecuador 25 times. I mean, that is just yeoman's work in this malaria-infested uh, equatorial region, uh, third world with you know kidnappings and police state. Uh, instead of me asking questions, you've got the floor. Let's talk more about why there's toxic waste, what this toxic waste is, uh, what's happening down there, where all this is going. Yeah, and, and let me just say, you know, um, I, I agree that we should be thinking about, more than thinking about moving towards alternative energy for a host of reasons. Um, but this film is not an anti-oil film. It's an anti-corporate irresponsibility film. I mean, I'd be a hypocrite right now to be making an anti-oil film because, you know, I fly to film festivals on airplanes, I heat my house with oil, I drive a car. You know, we're all kind of stuck in this system until until it changes. Um, but it's, a, it's an anti-corporate irresponsibility film. You know, there's responsible ways of drilling for oil and irresponsible ways of drilling for oil. And what happened in the jungle down there uh, you know, Texaco, you know, we use Texaco and Chevron interchangeably just to explain to the audience, uh, the, you know, the operator and the, and the, and the, and the perpetrator of, of the, what I'm talking about is the Texaco Petroleum Company, which was purchased by Chevron. You know, they merged in 2001. So with that, uh, Chevron inherited the lawsuit. So sometimes I say Texaco, sometimes I say Chevron. It's, you know, so they're, they're, they're the same at this point. Um, but Texaco dis discovered oil in the 60s down in this Amazon rainforest, this pristine jungle environment. In fact, you know, they say that one of the few places on Earth that survived the last ice age was the Ecuadorian part of the Amazon rainforest. You know, most of the Amazon rainforest is in Brazil, but the headwaters of the Amazon begin uh, in Ecuador and the, the Ecuadorian 
Nestorian part of, of the rainforest, they say is one of the few places on Earth that survived the last ice age, and therefore that is the reason it has such incredible, you know, biodiversity. Over a quarter of the world's species are in this little part of... It's uh, super uh, ancient. For those that don't know, the Ice Age hasn't run over it, killing whatever was originally there or displacing it. This is one of the most ancient places on Earth where you have a continually developing system is what you're saying. Exactly. And, and of course, it, it, it barely has survived now the last 40 years of oil production because of the way in which it was done. Um, you know, Texaco discovered oil, came in, they set up a consortium with the government. Um, you know, the government is not blameless in this situation, uh, but Texaco was, you know, created and operated the system that, as the plaintiffs say, was designed to pollute. Basically, there were a three levels of pollution down there. Uh, the first and most insidious uh, level of pollution is that when the crude oil comes up from the ground where it's been, you know, you know, hanging out <laughs> beneath the Earth's surface for millions of years, uh, it's mixed with water. That water is called formation water because it's been mixed in with the crude uh, for, you know, eons. Um, there's a process of separation where the marketable crude is separated out from the water. The marketable crude goes by pipeline to a port and is sent off so that we can go get it refined and have lots of gasoline in this country. Um, the water is supposed to be the standard operating practice of the day, although Chevron will claim otherwise. The standard operating practice of the day is to re-inject that water into dormant wells uh, so that it goes back into the earth, out of, the, you know, way below the water table. Um, that's an expensive process, relatively speaking. So the plan. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, here in Texas, a lot of oil industry. If any of that gets into the water table, it's a huge lawsuit, oh, huge event. Absolutely. If any of the, if, if this stuff happened in the United States, these people would be in jail. Is my opinion. Um, you know, Chevron disputes that and claims otherwise. They, you know, there's one of the problems with this case is that the court has been overwhelmed with paper and disinformation and misinformation and counterclaims. Your head will spin. Well, like you said, you're not a petroleum geologist. Yeah, I'm not, not a. I'm not a chemist. Yeah. But watching the film, we've been playing clips of it here in yeah. the background. You're by a river and you see the oil and the gasoline, the shininess where the people are bathing and drinking. It's coming by. You see the black oil pouring out into the water, you see, I mean, that they clearly... Yeah. Yeah, so so let me just, just, just so the, 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 the listeners understand, the, 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 so the oil, you know, the water and the oil are separated in this separation process. Oil goes off to market. The water is supposed to be re-injected into these, into these wells. Instead, it was literally pumped into the rivers and streams that feed the Amazon River that are also the home to... It used to be six indigenous tribes. Now it's five indigenous tribes. Um, and these people just drink the water and didn't know better. And in fact, we heard stories, I can't verify it, so it was not included in the film, uh, but we heard stories that actually the early oil development people actually told the locals that that formation water was, um, you know, had vitamins and minerals and was good for you. Um, you know, these people didn't know better. They trusted the, you know, they, they had never had never had contact with white people until about 40 years ago. Um, you know, and again, I'm not, I just want to well, say. Well, hell, they tell us that sodium fluoride, that's a catch-all for hundreds of chemicals. We've got a tour of the Austin facility. It's hundreds of chemicals they put from the byproduct of fertilizer manufacturing in our water. So they tell us it's minerals. That's true. That's true. Um, you know, so that the, the, so one level of pollution was just the direct piping for three decades of formation water. The other level of pollution is that they carved out of the jungle unlined, and they will claim it's lined because the jungle clay is not permeable. You know, we saw evidence to the contrary. Um, they they carved these giant unlined pits when a well is first dug. The initial stuff that comes up is just full of is just kind of a toxic soup of stuff that gets dumped into these, uh, into these uh, pits, and then whenever they do maintenance on the wells, more stuff gets dumped into these pits. And these pits are, you know, it's not unusual to have pits, but they're supposed to be cleaned up. And these pits were just left in the jungle. And what was a little unusual in the jungle version of these pits is that because it rains so much in the Amazon rainforest, that's why it's called the rainforest, uh, these pits would overflow from rain. So uh, they installed these gooseneck pipes uh, that allowed the 
rainwater, which then had been mixing with the petroleum, to uh, you know leach into the um, well to, to go right into the rivers and streams. 